Right, got some classic histology coming up. The histology of the esophagus. The food tube. Why is the histology of the esophagus so classic? Well, we're interested in the anatomy of the gastrointestinal tract. The histology of the gastrointestinal tract is a uh, layers of epithelium and connective tissue and muscle and that organization that structure that we see the way it's arranged in the esophagus continues all the way through so once we've worked it out once we've got it wired for the esophagus we apply the same organization to all the other tubes we'll look at the other tubes in future weeks just the esophagus today and then we'll, when we go to look at the small intestine the stomach the large intestine we'll apply that same plan and really we'll be looking at the changes to the epithelium because of course the gastrointestinal tract as it passes through us it has different jobs to do so it's largely the epithelium that has become specialized to that job as we go through. So what is the job of the esophagus? Here it is. What we're looking at there is there's a, a tube so I don't think this is a human one, it's a bit too small, isn't it? Uh, the human esophagus is about 25 centimeters long. It's a muscular tube, and this is a transverse section through it. So it looks like, well, a bit of a circle, but a flattened circle, a bit of a flattened oval. Uh, this is stained with hematoxylin and eosin. So most of it's gonna be a bit pink, at least I think it is. And uh, the nuclei will be purple. At least I think it's h and &E. I haven't actually looked at this. <laughs> uh, an insight into my workflow. Uh, a little bit last minute. Um, also then, here's the gastrointestinal tract on the board. So there's the oral cavity and the pharynx. The esophagus is here uh, running behind the larynx. So it's a flattened tube most of the time. And of course, it's a tube connecting the pharynx. So swallow, food is swallowed, gets pushed into the esophagus. Food gets passed down the esophagus into the stomach. So that's the job of the esophagus. Nothing to do with absorption or anything yet, just passing the bolus of food down to the stomach. But can you see the surface of the esophagus here? We can see the muscle, and we can see that this muscle is running longitudinally. So remember that when we cut a transverse section through it, and imagine what that's gonna look like when we cut a transverse section through it, and then we look at it down the microscope. So that's the, the human esophagus, that's its job. Transport of food, and how well have you chewed your food um okay uh and of course we eat different foods some foods are softer than others i don't know what animal this esophagus is from but some animals eat quite hard food you know se seeds and what have you um uh -huh. um so that means that the epithelium needs to have a bit of a protective function because we're potentially swallowing things that are not nice and smooth and well chewed. Maybe they've got some spiky bits on them. Right, so we can't fit in the whole esophagus there, but the white in the center then, how well focused is that? The white in the center there is the lumen, is the space, that's where the fo food goes. Look how folded that is. And the reason that's so folded is because the esophagus runs between the trachea and the vertebrae. So it's in a squashed space. It's not held open as a tube. The trachea we saw last week has got cartilaginous rings to keep it open as a tube for breathing. But this is a flat tube surrounded by muscle. When you push the bolus of food down it, it can expand and it can push into the trachea. It can take up a little bit of space in the trachea. That's why the C-shaped rings of the trachea have got the gap at the back. The esophagus expands and the bolus of food passes down to the stomach and it doesn't pass down to the, the stomach through gravity. It passes to the stomach via peristalsis and that's what all of this stuff is for. This is the muscle. So that muscle that we can see on the model, so this is the outer part of the esophagus there, that layer 
that's muscle, and that's muscle running longitudinally that we've cut transversely through, which is why it looks like lots of little blocks. So peristalsis is the squeezing of the bolus of food down the tube, and it does this in two ways. The circular muscle squeezes the tube to push something along, and the longitudinal muscle makes the tube shorter to push the thing along, and that's a very well-coordinated action. But we are, of course, getting ahead of ourselves, but I'm just outlying what we can see here. We can see the lumen, so then those cells next to the lumen, that's a thick looking epithelium, and then we have some support tissue to the epithelium, some muscle, some more support tissue, muscle and muscle. Uh, this is looking at it with a four times objective, 10 times magnification to my eyes, so 40 times magnification for me. If we jump up to the, so that's the 10 times objective, And we're, we're on the epithelium there. <laughs> I'm always chasing dust with this microscope. Um, let me just tweak this. Where's my slider? There you are. Tweak the image just a little bit. All right. So this is the epithelium of the esophagus. Uh, and the epithelium lines the gastrointestinal tract all the way through. And this epithelium, well, we can see lots of layers. We can see a dark purpley base to it. And I think we can see some flat cells. Let's go up to the 20 times objective. There's that epithelium. Yeah, so we can see that if I move over here, near the surface of that epithelium, um, we can see some cells that have possibly lost their nuclei. We can see some very flat nuclei. So these are squamous epithelial cells. Um, there are multiple layers, so it's stratified but it's not keratinized, so the, the epithelium of the skin is keratinized, making it waterproof and particularly tough. So this is a non-keratified, stratified squamous epithelium. And the purpose of that is that as we swallow the food, the bolus of food, it's potentially abrasive, so it's gonna wear away the cells of the epithelium next to the lumen, just like the cells on the surface of the skin get worn away. Um, so we have multiple layers, so as the layers closest to the lumen lost away, there are more layers to come through. And the cells at the base there, the basal layer, the purpley ones, that's your progenitor cell population. So they are continually making new cells, which then rise towards the lumen. So new cells are constantly replacing the lost cells. And that matches the purpose of the esophagus. The esophagus is a transport tube, so it's transporting food that we've chewed and swallowed down to the esophagus. And when we look at this epithelium in different areas of the gastrointestinal tract, in areas of the gastrointestinal tract that are responsible for the absorption of nutrients, the epithelium will look quite different. Now, uh, the epithelium will have a basement membrane, so it's a flat sheet which those cells are all attached to. We've got a few gaps here. What can we see? So I'm now at the, uh, the higher power. This is the 40 times objective. Um, okay, let's go back out a bit. Okay, that's, that's reasonably good. So we've got our epithelium. Uh, it's got a basement membrane underneath that basal layer of cells holding all that together. And then the next layer kind of looks a bit wispy. That's the lamina propria. And when we looked at the trachea, we saw the same arrangements. The lamina propria, lamina means layer, propria, proper. So it's a proper layer. This is a, a layer of connective tissue, loose connective tissue, so a supportive layer, a structural layer. We'll find little blood vessels in there, maybe lymphatics. 
uh, maybe some maybe some nerves in there, um, and that's supporting the epithelium. Now in the trachea we said epithelium plus lamina propria equals mucosa. You put those two together, you got the mucosa. In the gastrointestinal tract, we've got an extra layer here. Does that look like anything to you? That is muscle, um, smooth muscle. Well, so this is the muscularis mucosa. Uh, this is an extra layer we find in the gastrointestinal tract. So we have epithelium plus lamina propria plus muscularis mucosa. Those three together make the mucosa. And the muscularis mucosa probably helps keep the epithelium pushed against whatever's passing down the lumen, in this case the bolus of food. Uh, and we, we get various folds in the epitheliums. It probably helps to squeeze out those folds as well. So that's the muscularis mucosa. Can you see that the cells, the smooth muscle cells of the muscularis mucosa um, have been cut through? So these are running longitudinally. So we've cut, these are cells going in that direction and we've cut, cut through them like that. So they're longitudinal cells. And they're running in a ring around the epithelium and the muscularis mucosa is separating the mucosa from the next layer. So there's the epithelium. Next to it is the lamina propria. Then we have the muscularis mucosa. That's the mucosa and then the next layer is the submucosa. So the submucosa is uh, is the next layer out. And in the submucosa, we're gonna find blood vessels, and we're gonna find glands, mucus secreting glands that are gonna secrete mucus into uh, the lumen of the esophagus, because that's gonna help uh, lubricate the passage of food down, down the esophagus. How well can we see that? That looks a bit, a bit blurry. But can you see how, look, there are some, these are blood vessels. Uh, we can see the endothelium on the inside. So that, that submucosa is gonna have mucus secreting glands and their ducts, blood vessels, little arteries and veins, nerves, lymphatics, connective tissue. Um, so it's very much a support layer with glands in it for the, uh, for the esophagus. And then, so again, look, there's, the, there's the lumen. There's the epithelium. There's the lamina propria. There's the muscularis mucosa. There's the submucosa. And then we're into the first muscle layer and then the second muscle layer. Can you see, so, can you see this first muscle layer? So it looks like we're looking at smooth muscle here. Um, can you, does that make sense that the, the direction of the fibers there show that this, this first layer of muscle, this layer of muscle closest to the lumen is a ring. It's going around the esophagus, so this will constrict the esophagus. And then the next layer out, so the outermost layer, these muscle fibers are running up and down the esophagus. These are longitudinal muscles and we've, we've cut through them. There is an inner circular ring of muscle and an outer longitudinal layer of muscle. And together those two layers work to do peristalsis, to convey the contents along the lumen. And look, we can see more blood vessels and nerves and what have you in between them because Muscles need blood vessels and nerves. Now, in the human esophagus, uh, this muscle, at the upper third, is skeletal muscle. You know how you swallow? You can control the muscles of your tongue and your pharynx to a certain extent. So the upper part of the esophagus is skeletal muscle under voluntary control. 
And then as we get to the middle third of the esophagus, this muscle, these muscle layers here, become a mix of smooth muscle and skeletal muscle. Smooth muscle is involuntary muscle. And then as we get to the lower third of the esophagus, as we get closer to the stomach, these muscle layers are smooth muscle layers. So this then becomes entirely autonomic muscle that you have no control over. And just like the rest of the gastrointestinal tract, this smooth muscle will automatically propel the contents along the lumen of the gastrointestinal tract. So, muscle and muscle. Oh, is that... Actually, I'm seeing some... Uh... So I don't know what animals this, this is from, right, but... Can you see... I'm seeing some striations there. So this looks like skeletal muscle then. And this muscle here... We can also see how the nuclei are towards the edge. So yeah, this looks like skeletal muscle in this section. And likewise here, we've got the nuclei around the outside of the transversely sectioned muscle, so that looks like skeletal muscle. Uh -huh. Anywho, so it depends on the level of the esophagus that you're looking at as to whether the muscle will be smooth muscle or skeletal muscle. This is basically a progression from the uh, skeletal muscle at the outside bit of the tube to smooth muscle on the inside bit of the tube. And then when you get to the other end of the tube, you, you get to the skeletal muscle of the skin again. Um, so then, that's the muscularis externa, those two layers or the muscularis propria, it also gets called. But then as we go out to the very outer parts of the esophagus, uh, the esophagus is surrounded by an adventitia. Again, connective tissue surrounding this, holding it all together, which isn't staining very well. And here we'll find more blood vessels, nerves, lymphatics, fat. Uh, so the adventitia is this connective tissue around the outside. So if you have a, an esophagus, and you look at the gross surface of the esophagus, it'll tend to look shiny because of this connective tissue covering. So the adventitia. All right. That's it. Um, that is the microscopic anatomy of the esophagus, which is so important. The reason it's classic histology is because this organization that we see here, we see the lumen, the epithelium, the lamina propria, the muscularis mucosa, the submucosa, the two layers of muscle making up the muscularis externa, and then the adventitia, that organization of layers of cells and tissues um, goes all the way through the gastrointestinal tract. So you learn it once, and then you apply it all the way through the same principles. Um, the thing that we'll see over the next few weeks as we go through the gastrointestinal tract is how the epithelium changes. Um, I'm off to Austria to climb some mountains in a couple of weeks. There might be a gap, but uh, we'll look at small bowel, large bowel, uh, and some of the organs. And then we'll also, at some point, go back into the oral cavity, look at the tongue, maybe look at the oral mucosa and the lips, look at tonsils, and that sort of thing. So you see, ho hopefully you see how the cells looking at the cells and how the cells are arranged explains so much about functional anatomy and really keys you in with what can go wrong uh, with the anatomy here as well as how it works normally all right see you next week mm -hmm.